Welcome back. Uh, this week we're going to be going back to World War II again, which is a very popular topic in these videos, if you haven't noticed recently, and the reason for that is because, well, you all seem to be very interested in the period, so I do try to, you know, look at what people are watching and kind of make my choices about what I'm going to show based on what videos are popular, and, well, World War II is popular. Um, up until this point, what I've mostly been doing is um, German World War II soldiers, um, because people have been really interested in how to paint the camouflage pattern. But I also wanted to sort of branch out and, you know, maybe see if you guys liked also seeing some other kinds of soldiers from World War II, maybe some other forces, uh, maybe the other side, since, you know, we don't want to just favor the Germans here. I mean, they are pretty and fun to paint, but, hey, you know, there are a lot of other people involved in World War II. So, this week I have chosen to be painting this guy, and as you can tell, probably, or maybe you have some idea, we, this is an American. Yay, go America. Um, and we're going to be definitely still sticking to a very popular, famous unit. And this, indeed, in case you can't tell, is an airborne uh, unit. Um, this particular figure is by Warlord. It's from their Bold Action range. It is a really nice sculpt by Paul Hicks. And this is what I'm going to be painting um, this particular week. Uh, this guy obviously saw a lot of action during the war. Um, obviously the 82nd and the 101st Airborne are the most famous, and you've got things like Band of Brothers. So I imagine a lot of people would like to paint this guy and use him in their games. Now, when we're talking about uniforms on Americans, they tend to be pretty dull. Well, I mean, at least in comparison to the Germans, <clears throat> who do a lot of things with camouflage and have some more interesting colors, their uniforms. The Americans wore a lot of khaki and buff, and there was not a lot actually of variation. If you look at a uniform for an airborne soldier, you're actually going to see quite a bit of the same color on pretty much all parts of the uniform. So what this tutorial is really going to be about is, you know, seeing when you've got a unit like that, who's basically wearing the same color all over from top to toe, you know, what you can do to kind of vary that and switch it up. So it's about kind of trying to develop different shades and tones and, you know, variants of the same color on um, one figure so that you can sort of show some differences between different areas and still keep the figure interesting while remaining true to the, you know, the color palette that you're supposed to be using on that particular figure. Um, we've already talked about that basically in some earlier videos, things like how to paint black and how to paint white, you know, how to do some total things. But this, in this case, we're just going to look at it in a more general sense, and we're going to be looking how you do that, because on this guy it's going to be about, you know, brown and buff and khaki. So we're going to be uh, sort of looking at how to keep that particular color range varied. And let's see, do I need to mention anything else? I don't think so. This guy is, has always been primed already, and I have painted his face. So, I, since there's nothing else I think I need to tell you, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I'm going to start out now by base coating the figure, and I'm going to be using the Foundry Buff Leather Triad for his uniform. But into that, I'm going to mix a little bit of the um, a British Equipment Canvas shade color, which is also from the Foundry Triad, and that adds a little sort of greenish-yellow cast into that brown, because I don't want it to be too warm in this case. Once the base coat is dry, I'm going to give everything a light wash with um, Foundry, or sorry, not Foundry, Citadel Agrax Earthshade just to get some darker color into the recesses of the uniform. With the shading done, I'm going to start um, lightening up the uniform by uh, layering on more of the uh, buff leather. And I'm starting out with the medium shade here, and I am once again mixing the British Equipment Canvas into that color, the shade color of British Equipment Canvas, into that to get a little more of that greenish tone. And I'm going to just apply this to all of the areas of the, the uniform, basically. And you have to pay a lot of attention with these figures because <laughs> um, the um, American Airborne Troops have a lot of pockets and sacks and bags, but they have a very 
bag uniform so you have to you know make sure you're hitting all of the areas that are actually part of the uniform and not separate equipment but you can always just what i do in this case is just err on the side of painting more <laughs> instead of less so if then later on i go back and need to paint some piece in a different color that's fine but at least i will have done this and you know it's out of the way with the uh, medium uh, medium highlight done i'm going to then take the buff leather light and once again mix the shade equipment canvas in there and use that as a highlight or highlight color on you know wherever i need it where i need it the uniform to feel brighter um then the final step in uh, painting the uniform in pockets and such is going to be making an edge highlight because this uniform has lots of seams like you've, he's got these patches on his elbows and knees and then just there's just lots of seams and borders on the clothing and then when you've got an outfit like that um, edge highlights make a lot of sense. So to do that, I just took that last uh, highlight color that I already had and I mixed some Boneyard Light from the Foundry Tribe into that to get a nice light color. And I used that then just very carefully to um, put down some edges or edge highlights where I needed them along the edges of seams, the tops of sleeves and places like that. And, and, and that just makes the uniform pop just a little bit. I'm next going to start working on painting all of his um, straps and bags and other paraphernalia that he's wearing um, but are sort of separate from his uniform and in some cases you'll see airborne soldiers who have backpacks and straps and stuff they're almost the same colors as the uniform but I want there to be variation here as I said because we need that to keep the figure looking interesting so I'm going to base coat his backpack, his straps, his belt pouches, his shovel cover, um, the various tie downs on his pants, and he's also got sort of an ammo, his ammo pouch also on his shoulder. I'm gonna base coat this all with the Foundry Raw Linen shade color to start out with because I want this to be, it's gonna be a similar shade to his uniform, but it's gonna be a more green color, a more greenish color, and a little bit lighter. With this um, done, I'm then going to apply a wash to all of these areas and I'm going to wash everything with Agrax Earthshade because I don't want this to get too green. I want it to stay, you know, consistent with the uniform. Once the wash is dry, then I'll start highlighting and I'm going to highlight with that British uh, equipment canvas that I discussed earlier. I'm going to use the shade color from that triad and then also just the normal color. I'm not going to use the light color because I think it gets too bright and I don't want that. Um, actually, later on I will use it a little bit to just do some quick edge highlighting, you know, just to, to make things pop out. But in all cases, I'm going to mix that equipment canvas color with just a little of the buff leather medium. Uh, that makes it, you know, makes it slightly browner because, I, as I said, we want unity here and I don't want it getting too green. So you can see how this is going to be a distinctly different shade from the uniform but because I'm using or I'm sort of incorporating some of the same colors that I used on the uniform there's going to be a certain uh, cohesion or cohesiveness I guess between the th this equipment that he's wearing and his the rest of his clothes now I'm going to go ahead and work on the leather areas of his uniform, which includes his boots, uh, his chin strap, and also the handle on his dagger. I'm going to be base coating these areas using Vallejo uh, German Camouflage Black Brown, which is the standard base I like to use for leather. I will then be applying Foundry Bay Brown Medium to those areas because it's a kind of a nice red brown. And then I will be highlighting it first using the uh, Foundry Chestnut Shade Color and then the uh, Buff Leather. Uh, shade color because I want a nice very red orange color to the leather here because if you look at these guys the, it seems at least from what I've seen in most of the airborne uh, the units that there are pictures of they tended to have very uh, sort of red brown color to uh, the leather on their uniforms. Now we're going to do some green elements on the uniform. Um, that's one distinct feature of this airborne uniform is there's reinforcement patches on the knees and elbows and they're sort of a greenish color. They're not really, really strikingly green, but certainly compared to the rest of the uniform. I'm also going to base coat the helmet 
even though it's got webbing and camouflage on it, I want that to be the base color because the helmet was a dark green. And also, uh, the sheath of his dagger was also sort of a dark greenish color. The colors I'm using for this green, by the way, I'm going to use Vallejo Extra Dark Green and then just plain Vallejo Dark Green sort of as the medium color. And I'm just going to apply that shade, the extra dark green first of the shade color. Then I'm going to use a medium highlight color of the just plain dark green. Once I've done that, I need to get a, a really bright highlight. And I'm going to make that by mixing some of the um, Foundry equ uh, British Equipment Canvas um, medium color into the Vallejo dark green. And I'm going to use that to get some highlights, especially on the elbows and knees because you know those are areas where a lot of light is hitting so it's important to highlight those areas and I will even after I've highlighted that initially I'll then go ahead and you know, mix even more of that color in so that I can make sort of an edge highlight for uh, fine lining around the top and sides of the patches which gives it kind of a effect like light is hitting it from one specific direction. I'm now going to paint the webbing on his helmet using the British Equipment Canvas Triad. So I'm going to apply all three colors. And I'm going to apply that to the helmet with some light overbrushing because I want, you know, still that dark green to remain in the recesses because, you know, that's how it would look. You'd have the light webbing over the top. Don't worry too much about really great coverage because we still have to paint all of this sort of camouflage fabric that's on top. I'm now going to introduce one sort of final color triad into the mix here and that's um, the Foundry Boneyard um, colors and I'm just going to, as you can see here, apply the shade, medium, and the highlight color first to his gloves and then to the sort of the bits of camouflage or fabric that he's woven into the netting of his helmet. Now you have to be a little bit careful with the Boneyard triad because the lightest color Boneyard light is quite stark. It's, it's very close to white and we don't want this uniform really to look like there's a lot of white on it because that's not the idea. This is all browns and tans and khaki. So this, this triad is, very, is, is a very good, very complementary um, color um, triad to go along with the rest of the uniform. But the high highlight is just a little white. So when I'm done, I am going to be taking some Citadel Seraphim Sepia Wash and lightly applying that over his helmet and then also over his gloves, really just to tone that color down a little bit, add a little bit more brown into it and, and you know, get a, a little bit of unity, more unity, I should say, with the rest of the colors in the uniform. And now it's time to do some wooden areas, and um, that includes his uh, gun stock and also the handle on his shovel. I am base coating these using uh, Bay Brown Shade from the Foundry Triad, and as usual, I'll be highlighting that with Chestnut Shade and uh, Chestnut Medium, also from one of the Foundry Triads. I'm not going to do the metal really, really quickly. That includes his gun, the fittings on his dagger, and, and his shovel and a few buttons. And I'm going to base coat those with Vallejo German Gray mixed with some Vallejo Natural Steel. I'll then highlight everything just with Natural Steel real lightly and add a wash, a blue wash from the Citadel uh, wash range to the barrel of the gun. Now for the detail-oriented, how, here's how you can add insignia to the uniform. On his left shoulder, he's got the Airborne Divisional logo, which is the 82nd in this case. I made a, a Vallejo black-red square as the base with a foundry dark blue medium arch above that. And I highlighted both areas using Mephiston Red for the red area and um, Tomb Blue Shade for the blue area. I used those same blue colors to make then the circle, which is in the middle of the red square where the, where the text for his logo is gonna go. And I used a very thin down white to write, sort of indicate some text in that blue arch and also make those little um, A's which are part of the logo of the 82nd Airborne. Just do it very finely, make kind of a cross. On his other shoulder, he's got an American flag, and I have taken some Arctic Blue Medium and made sort of a rectangle as a base for that. Then I've taken the Mephiston Red and used that to draw a rectangle sort of over the top, and some of the Tomb Blue Shade and the Dark Blue Medium as sort of the box in the corner of the American flag. And then once again with the thin down white, I indicate some bars and dots in that flag very finely, just the indication and I highlight the outside of that white area around the flag using the white that I just used on the other areas 
And then you can go back and kind of clean that up and use those lighter colors to add some highlight. I also outlined the, the outside of that, the edge of that white insignia, the flag insignia, using some German gray that I mixed in with white to get a little lighter so that there's a more clear edge between that and the very light sort of khaki of his shoulder. And that's our finished Airborne. Uh, I hope this tutorial gave you some good ideas about how you can take a relatively boring plain uniform with a lot of the same colors in it, but still get some variety and interest by creating slightly different shades that are all interconnected by mixing in some colors that are similar. It's kind of like what we did earlier in our cowboy tutorial, but this is another example of that. Um, when it comes to these airborne forces, you've actually got a lot more choice. If you look at some photographs of the uniforms, you'll see that there are quite a lot of variety as possible. You can opt for a greener tone to your uniform, a browner tone. There's a lot of acceptable range and colors. You can even make different parts of the uniform different colors. I didn't do that here, but I've seen examples where the, the top is a slightly different shade than the pants. The pants are greener or browner than the top. And that's another way, especially within a whole unit of these guys, to get more variation and you know get some individuality among the figures. And that's something you might want to consider doing when you're painting your own uh, airborne unit. So once again, hope you liked the video. Uh, like it, please, if you did. Um, share it with your friends. Leave me some comments and definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I as always want to hear if you like this, if you didn't like this, what you'd like to see in the future. So, and so then I guess I will see you next time. And until then, happy painting.